I'm here with Terry O'Brien, the founding artistic director of the Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival, and you are directing a uh, reading of A Christmas Carol. Uh, tell me first about that and, and how that started. I know this is a couple of years now that you've been doing this. Right. I think it started, it started actually several years back when for the first time I actually read A Christmas Carol, having seen a whole bunch of different dramatizations of it, both in movies uh, and, and an animated movie, and then uh, different stage productions. And um, somebody gave me a copy of it, and I sat down and read it, and, and I was surprised at how much, um, how much really brilliant... Uh, events and imagery were in the narrative and how much really the narrative, the, the author's voice, did so much of the work of the story. And I and I felt that a lot of that stuff had been lost in the dramatization that I had seen. And I, I was wanted to know if there was a way to capture it in some way. So we experimented around a bit, as you said, over the last couple of years. Uh, well, the first uh, two years ago at Oscar Bell in, um, in Garrison, we did a reading of just the ghost of Christmas past, which included the, the party at the Fezziwigs' house, and so we, we called it the Fezziwigs, uh, and then uh, it, it was pretty successful. So um, the next year we added the ghost of Christmas present and did those two as a sort of as a, uh, a piece unto itself, uh, also at Boston Bell, um, and still called it the Fezziwigs, but um, we kind of experimented further with how to use, you know, how to sort of present the narrative, and then use uh, actors to be able to play out certain scenes, certain segments of the play, uh, or sorry, certain segments of the story, rather, as well as uh, as expressing the narrative. So then, um, again, I think it, it went very well. People really seemed to enjoy it. I, I found it, and I think a lot of people found it very moving and very exciting, and the feedback that I was getting was that everybody wanted us to do it just the same way. We, Props, no costumes, just the actors and and their book in hand. So I went ahead and I adapted the entire story into about a 85 minute sort of a one act play uh, for four actors who who do all the part and read all the narrative and and, uh, and uh, we're doing it for the first time um, tomorrow night and then it's off and uh, beginning this Friday. It, was it was that a challenge for you to be able to uh, whittle down that entire play, that story, into 85 minutes? Um, it, it's actually a pretty um, it's a pretty well written story, and there are, there are certain you know there are certain things that I guess I had to make choices about just in the interest of of being brief. So I guess there there were um, there were certain challenges in in terms of making it short, really one, having having the sort of two previous years of, I guess you could call it experimentation, mm -hmm. uh, that I did with the actors when uh, we were performing at Boston Bell, I had a really good, uh, um, I, I felt like I had an approach to it that I could understand, and I just kind of extended that over the whole story. Um, but the story moves uh, quite quickly, and, and, and I think one of the reasons it's so moving is that it goes, it, it kind of goes off the speed at which people think and feel. Um, and so it's, it, even though it's 85 minutes, it actually, I think, feels like it's more brisk than that. Mm -hmm. um, you you have uh, obviously worked with Shakespeare for so long, and, and I know you've worked with other authors in the regular uh, summer season, but is, is, there, is there similarities between Dickens and Shakespeare that you found through adapting this? Well, I think that they're, they're both pretty smart people, as far as I can tell, mm -hmm. uh, just from what I know of their their um, writing. I think that um, they're both very, very shrewd and smart in their observations about people and their, the little things that they point out about characters. Um, uh, they, you know, they were well, several hundred years apart, so I guess they have different kind of historical context. But, but mainly, they both were, you know, artists were very, very devoted to using the English language, to using words mm -hmm. in order to, in order to tell stories. And of course, Shakespeare mostly did drama, and Dickens um, wrote novels. So, so there, there are differences, and I guess those are some of the differences and similarities. My guess is that a year or two down the road, after I've had a little more time with the Dickens project, I'll. I'll probably have a better sense of, you know, what the differences and what the similarities are.
similarities are between them, though. Okay. Um, I, I know your style uh, in particular. I, I've seen that you use music in your productions uh, very strongly, and, and you really consider that quite a bit in, in how to interpret things. Is, is music a part of this uh, reading here? You know, this is a, this is a very... What's really interesting about this is that if, if we put music in this, uh, I feel like it would slow it down. Mm. I feel like it would sort of get in the way. This is this is in a way even more. And, and I think that what we do at Hudson, at Hudson College Shakespeare Festival is, is very streamlined Shakespeare with only the minimal amount of of you know additional things put on put on top of the story in order to tell the story. Mm-hmm. In this case, it's even more stripped down than that. There are you know that the actors go seamlessly from from one character to another, there's no, um, there's, there are no light changes. We, you know, they essentially say the, the, the room changed and suddenly they were in a different place or they, they, you know, uh, they, they quickly went into a new town or a, a village sprung up around them. Sure. And so you, so I feel like you don't, if we used a musical transition, it would just slow it down when, yeah. when we've already gotten to that, to the new place, to the next place where it's supposed to be. Okay. Um, well, tell me about the actors. Uh, who, who, what do you have? Uh, who do you have for this? And uh, veterans, and, and, and you know, what? All right, I have. I'm working with four um, veterans of the, of the Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival company: uh, Richard, Richard Urkel, uh, Eleanor Handley, Katie Harkey, and Stephen Paul Johnson. And Steve um, does does the Scrooge work, and then uh, quite a bit of the narrative. And the other three actors play all of the rest of the parts. They, you know, Rick plays Scrooge at a number of, uh, you know, at a number of stages in his life when he's younger. Mm-hmm. And then um, Katie and Eleanor play, you know, Katie plays um, Belle and Fan, and Eleanor plays Mrs. Cratchit, and Eleanor plays uh, the Ghost of Christmas Past, and Rick plays the Ghost of Christmas Present, and and they all they all sort of have certain certain pieces that they do, um, mm-hmm. but but I think my favorite thing about this project is just the people that I'm working with and how much I like them and how how what a pleasure they are to to spend time with. And I think that's one of the things that makes a project like this really fun. And not only fun for me to do, but fun for people to watch because I think their uh, their spirit and their you know, great attitude and generosity it really comes across when you see it um, performed in you know in a in a theater space or in at the Bell. No, I, I I feel like this is especially for a reading, and when it's stripped down like this, you really have to have people on your side who are not just really good, but they are spirited and they and they're ready to jump at a hat and do something very different in the in the snap of a finger, really. Right, and and people are drawn to them because I think they can tell because of their personal warmth and just what you know, what lovely people they are. I think that, you know, that's something that's very evident when you see it. Mm-hmm. Um, so the uh, the actual productions at Boscobel, I believe they are now all sold out. Uh, but there's, right. a, there's a waiting right. list on that for people if they want to sign up for that. But there are also other productions that you guys are doing with this around the area? Right. There's one at West Point, which is um, Sunday, and, and I'll have these dates all at the I'm by tongue, but this coming Sunday, uh, we're at the West Point Academy. Um, then uh, the following Sunday, which is the 11th, uh, we're at the Ridgefield Playhouse. Mm-hmm. And then on the 18th, we're at the Katona Museum. Oh, the Sunday evening. And the Sunday performances are, are, we'll have to check our website for the exact performance times, which is uh, hbshakespeare.org. Okay. So a uh, number of ways that you can see this production and... Um, Again, thank you very much, Terry O'Brien, the founding artistic director of the Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival and the director of A Christmas Carol, the readings that are happening over the next few weeks here in the Hudson Valley. Again, thank you very much for uh, giving me a couple minutes.